NFL best bets, NBA props, NHL tips and predictions. Welcome to the Road to Millions. Andy and Corbin from wagertalk.com. We're going to give you uh, two NFL best bets each. We'll talk some NBA and NHL, and then we're going to talk UFC. Last last second decision, we're going to talk UFC. We'll give you a sleeper of the day, a stat of the day, and then we'll do bankroll reset day. As you guys know, we always start with some positive vibes from the audience. Uh, I was solo yesterday, and... Uh, so I talked about uh, getting out of my comfort zone and getting a little too cute. And, uh, it says uh, you're being a little too hard on yourself about leaving your comfort zone and getting too cute. Um, I, I, I just I want to get back into my comfort zone. So that's the goal. That's the goal. So um, riding with you on Easton Stick this week, Andy. I will tell you who did not ride with me on Easton Stick, and that is Corbin. Who's that? <laughs> quite, should... quite honestly i'm still glad that we had nothing to do with that game i'm still glad i i should have put it in I, I did enough free video so i figured everyone got got it in but these backup quarterbacks man when they come in and there's no film on them and you get a goofy game situation they tend to go over so um quick video on how to bet darts i can't find it anywhere I don't know what to tell you. Um, it's on the it's on most of the domestics. I've gotten messages saying like there are a couple states that don't have them. Somebody even sent me a message that they asked DraftKings and DraftKings was like, "Yeah, we don't do it." Except <laughs> here I am in Indiana and I have everything right there in front of me. So I don't know the different states. This is new to me. I think it's new yeah. to us. Um, Very strange. See, seeing states that don't have the World Championship of darts, uh, whatever. So, uh, went on wager merch and not seeing the parlay slogan shirt. I will get that. Uh, I will get that fixed um, because I have a link to it. They sent me a link. I'll make sure it gets up there. And then I'm absolutely going to run a special after the first of the year involving, uh, like, get like seven days and like half off a T-shirt or something. Um, but we'll get those. So, leave us a comment, guys, and please hit the thumbs up button. It helps the algorithm out. Tell us what your best bet is for today. What you're looking forward to for this weekend. Um, let's do best bets here real quick. Corbin, I'll start. Kyler Murray over 209 and a half passing. I think this is – I think this won't be on anybody's radar, and it's one of the reasons why I like it. He's playing the 49ers, so you're thinking, well, you can't possibly bet, you know, on the uh, – anybody playing the 49ers. You can pass on them, and it mostly comes in the second half, but that's fine. Uh, it doesn't matter how you get there. So the 49ers, they're averaging giving up 230 yards plus – in passing per game, last three, they've given up 222. Kyler Murray's coming off a game where he barely needed to pass the ball. It was that goofy game against the Steelers with the weather delays, and they ran the ball a bunch. But earlier this year when they played and Josh Dobbs was a the quarterback, they threw for 250-plus yards on San Francisco. I don't think that the game script is going to be the Cardinals ahead. So I think Kyler needs to pass. Jalen Hurts threw for almost 300 yards against him. Drew Locke threw for almost 270 yards against this 49ers team. So I think this number is way too low. I see Kyler Murray kind of in comeback mode. Um, and uh, if you get a hurry-up mode at the end of the the first half or the second half, you can eat up a lot of yards there. So, Corbin, I think that number is really, really low, and I think people are going to be scared of it because it's the 49ers. But uh, you can throw on them. So. Uh, Mitch Trubisky, you do not like to go over. Can't blame me on this one. Uh, what do you like the under? No, so Mitchell Trubisky is one of the worst quarterbacks in the league. Let's be honest. He's he he has been awful. So he came in last week. He threw uh 190 passing yards versus the Patriots. But interestingly enough for me, he threw it 35 times in that game which seems seems quite high to me so looking at some of the stats so the colts rank at 17th versus the pass and we always associate the colts with not a great secondary and you can throw on them but they also have this 26th worst run defense so i think that's really important here because i always mention the game scripts and the path to victory I think the steelers which is going to probably link into your next best bet <laughs> but i think the steelers are going to run all day and do they really want to throw with Trubisky when they seemingly don't really need to I think it's going to be quite a close game I don't think I think if you put the ball in his hands you're more likely to lose it than win it so I think they'll take a steady approach running the ball more often and I think this is quite a high total at 201 for a quarterback that I don't see throwing it 35 times again 
So I'll take Mitch Trubisky under 201 and a half passing. Agree completely. This Colts run defense was really good at the beginning of the year. They're decimated with injuries, and now they're just a complete fade. So, yeah, I'll take Najee over 53 and a half. Colts team uh, has given up uh, over the totals to Joe Mixon, Derrick Henry, and Rashad White easily over the last three games. Uh, last week, Najee Harris rushed for 29 yards. The Patriots have allowed 56 yards rushing per game the last three games. They are elite. How's Indy done? Well, they give up 138 <laughs> the last three games. So Najee's getting a very, very easy uh, defense compared to last week. So I think they hand him the ball a lot. The last thing you want as a Steelers coaching staff or fan is to watch Mitch Trubisky back up and pass. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I think I think it's the big Steelers running backs. I think over attempts could be a good one. Wouldn't surprise me if Jalen Warren got over his attempts and his rushing yards, but Najee over as a play for me. Uh, Corbin has caught Taylor Swift fever all in on Travis Kelsey here. Yeah. Um, we've seen his total dip this year. I I don't even remember in years past when his total was 66 and a half. So you like his over. Yeah, this number shocked me. Don't get me wrong. He hasn't had the greatest of years. But to see to see a six at the start of a Travis Kelsey number, <laughs> it, it's quite shocking, quite honestly. So... Obviously, they're coming off that that controversial ending to the game. Mahomes is all fired up. I think this is a spot where they're just going to turn it on. And you look who he's going to throw to. He has so many options, but so many of them are god-awful, quite honestly. He, he just goes to Kelsey every time, and the uptake in the recent uh, success has gone. So he's had uh, 83, 81, and 91 receiving yards the last three I think the tables are turning I think he's looked a lot healthier a lot better in the last couple of weeks so I'm going to take Mahomes in a game that I think he's going to throw a lot I think he's going to want revenge for what happened last week and I think they're going to try and get get right quite honestly I think Kelsey's the Kelsey's the way for this offense so don't forget that big catch got taken away he would have exactly he would have had a lot more yards added to that one so uh, there you go. That's why I'm, I, I, I'm just confused at this number, considering the last three, and you talk about that catch that would have taken them over a hundred as well. It's like, yeah, why is why is the number so low? But that that's the spot I like. So, Kyler Murray over passing, Trubisky under passing, Najee Harris over rushing, and Travis Kelsey over receiving. Those are your four NFL best bets. What do we have up, guys? We've been talking about it all week. Promo code. Gift 25 GIFT gets $25 off a seven-day pass. We've already got the 5% NFL pack. College football play has been uploaded. You're going to get all of our NHL plays, uh, UFC plays that we'll have for tomorrow, all sports, all percentages. The World Championships of Darts has officially started, so you can lock in all those plays. Uh, just use the promo code GIFT25 uh, at checkout at wagertalk.com. Let's go to the sneaky play of the day. I'm going to Buddy Heald under seven and a half rebounds plus assist. He is not getting this done. This done. Gone under in 14 out of 16 games. What's really strange is he's averaging 3.2 rebounds and 2.6 assists. So I'm very happy that we're getting seven and a half. Uh, when he goes over, he really goes over. His last two times he's gone over, he's had 13 and 10. You look at some of these games where he's gone under. There's a lot of threes and a lot of fours in there. So it's not like he's just barely, you know, going under it. So uh, Buddy Heald, they play Washington tonight. They played earlier this year. It was actually the first game of the season. He went under this total in that game. Washington is truly terrible. And one thing Corbin and I were talking about, with Halliburton there, it's tough for guys on the Pacers to get assists. I mean, Halliburton's up there putting up 14, 15 assists. That's not a lot of assists left uh, for – for everybody else, so I, I I think this may be a play that we ride for a little bit. Uh, so Buddy healed, and then for our stat of the day, uh, Josh Allen has an interception in nine straight games. The Cowboys have thirteen interceptions, and Allen is only minus one fifty to throw an interception this Sunday. Corbin, Love this it. line, this line worry is. I'm like, why is this not minus one eighty? Why? Why? I don't know. He throws one every game. <laughs> Like who knows? who knows? It's yeah, it's 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 a little it's bit certainly tempting. Yeah, yeah. So um all right, we, we just added this one before we do bankroll reset day. Uh 
great work by the graphics department. Uh, really went all out. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you, can tell Andy, you can tell Andy spent a couple of hours making this slide. The attention to detail, the, the mm -hmm. color. It's just such a vivid, attractive slide. So. Notice how the font is a different color from the background. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, um, so, all right. Well, here, let me pull it up. So, you, Corbin, you want to talk about some... Uh, some UFC lines. So let me pull up the UFC lines here real quick. Uh, the yeah. biggest one, the biggest worry, not worry, but the biggest one that you and I disagree with is Lipsky and Casey O'Neill. You want to start with that one? Yes. I think Casey O'Neill is levels, levels above Lipsky. I think she's better everywhere. And I think she's truly going to dominate in this matchup. She has, she's faster. She has a better gas tank. She's beaten better people. And she mixes in the kicks and the range so well. Lipsky's such a lazy thrower. She has absolutely no head movement. She literally just stands there and has a punching bag and then tries to walk forward straight into O'Neill's shots. She has, I think she has a slight reach advantage, particularly with the leg kicks. And I think she's going to chew her up uh, from range, quite honestly. I, would, I, I, I even think she may dominate so much that she gets a late finish. So I really like Casey O'Neill this weekend. All right, so I kind of disagree with you that she's beaten better competition. She lost to Jennifer Maya. Split decision against Roxanne Mataferi. Come on, come on. Uh, she did beat Shevchenko. Not that Shevchenko, the <laughs> other one. <laughs> so, and then, hey, I'll give it to you. You know, she did finish Lara Fritzen uh, back in 2021. So I disagree with your point on that one. Uh, I hate this line at minus 192. All I know is I watched... Casey O'Neill, I will give her credit. She walked forward against Jennifer Maya. The problem is she walked forward into 100 punches. She got lit up on the feet. She was bloodied up. She was beaten. Her head movement was non-existent. She was coming off of surgery, knee surgery. So I know she got that fight out of the way, but Lipsky just has a way of making these fights close even when they shouldn't be. And she's coming off of fight that she should not have won against Melissa Gatto, but she made it close enough. She did stuff a takedown or two late, and I think her cardio is better than, than you're giving her credit for. Um, I just, I, I think this is going to be a classic one, one going into the third round and we're going to be sweating out uh, what, what happens there. So um, I will point out that one of the, one of the more, I just, disappointing nicknames is Ariana Lipsky. Her, her nickname is Queen of Violence, and she doesn't have she any no knockouts violence. in the, She's in not the UFC. Well. <laughs> I think she has one finish, and it was a knee bar. So uh, this the Queen of Violence went to decision against Mandy Balm. Uh, so I, I think we need a, a nickname change in there. So the, Casey O'Neill and Ariana Lipsky, I can't get there on O'Neill. The, the one thing I will say, just to uh, – you somewhat touched on it. So, obviously, the fight against Maya was her first one coming back from a ACL injury. I think that's going to have got rid of some of the ring rust. I think she's going to be a far better version of herself, also for going through that adversity. Because up until that point, she had won so many fights in a row. That's her first, like, downward – fight losing that fight i think she's going to come back with a vengeance and she actually got better as the fight went on so we talked maya obviously dominated her particularly in the early rounds but that round three was a lot closer so i think i th yeah i think o'neill can take the momentum of the way she finished that fight into this one as well so all right what's the next one you want to talk about josh emmett do you want to start with do you want yeah, to talk about josh emmett i love josh emmett here at this price uh is he at, what is he, like, plus 180 or plus something? Plus 185 right now, yeah. So, obviously, Bryce Mitchell taking this on short notice. I thought he looked awful against Ige. Maybe one of his worst performances I've seen from him. I don't know if he's not training properly. He's taking it complacent. I'm not kind of sure what his attitude is. Uh, not sure quite a few people know with some of the views that he comes up with. He So, he easily could have lost versus Ige. I don't think he's beaten anyone of note particularly but the key thing for me here is that i feel like emmett's going to be too strong and too powerful for him he's emmett's so strong that he can stuff these takedowns 
Bryce doesn't he doesn't like trick you into a takedown. He doesn't show anything particularly fancy. He just kind of pushes you up against the cage and works the single or double leg. But I feel like with Emmett's strength, he's going to be able to pull the arms away from his legs and at least get into a clinch as opposed to having him around his waist. Emmett's only really lost to two of the top guys in uh, Yair and Taporia. He has so much experience. and I think he can uh, get a win here and try and push back into that top 10 top five kind of situation so uh could not disagree with you more i like bryce mitchell and bryce mitchell by decision uh can't disagree with anything that you just said uh bryce mitchell i believe lost against danny gay uh we are constantly told that that the number one criteria f for for judging is what damage is that right yeah. Corbin, that's what we're told uh they have not told the judges <laughs> because I keep watching time and time again that damage does not matter. And this is kind of a recent thing where, like, you control somebody and it doesn't matter. Uh, Bryce Mitchell went to the hospital after the fight. Meanwhile, Danny Gay was on Instagram talking about how he's got to get better. And he doesn't have a scratch on him. So here's why I think Bryce Mitchell is going to win. Uh, Bryce Mitchell is very, very outspoken about politics, religion, uh, and space lasers that started fires in Hawaii. Uh, he is. <laughs> like, so. <laughs> How do I counter that? How do I counter that? Uh, well, here, here? well, here's where I'm going. Here's where I'm going with this. He appears on Fox News all the time. All right. Who else fights on this card, Corbin, in the main event? Colby Covington. Colby Covington. Uh, who's going to be in? Who's going to be in attendance at this event, Corbin? <laughs> Quite a few people, I suspect. And Mr. Donald Trump is going to be in attendance at this one. So you've got the Republican National Convention fight night, which is what I'm calling this. You've got Colby Covington in the main event. You've got Fox News star Bryce Mitchell. Here's my thing. If you are a judge and you agree with Bryce Mitchell on his stances, I'm sorry, you're just giving rounds to Bryce Mitchell, even the ones that he lost. If you believe and watch the same things that Bryce Mitchell does, and there is a close round, you will justify it for Bryce Mitchell. He can hold Josh Emmett down and not land one punch. Emmett can land 20, and the judges will absolutely talk themselves into giving him... The, that. That is like literally why I think he won against Danny Gay. Because I watched, I went back and watched that fight. There is no, re there's no way you can s look at the criteria that the UFC gives you and says, "Well, Bryce Mitchell clearly won that fight." So that's my conspiracy theory that Bryce Mitchell is going to win by decision. And if you notice, when did he lose? He lost to Taporia because he got finished, and he lost on the Ultimate Fighter to Brad Katona when he got finished. So he's never lost a decision. And it doesn't matter if he's going to be out of shape and not striking because I think the judges have already made up their minds. If a round is close, it's going to Bryce Mitchell. That's my theory. Because you're right about you're right about everything. He he he. His gym is like out in the middle of nowhere. He doesn't train with yeah. anybody good, and you already know what yeah. he's going to do. He's just going to run forward, try and grab you, and hold you down on the ground. And then he's got his Fox News buddies on the judging panel to give it to give him the fight. So I. Every Bryce Mitchell fight from now on is I, it's Bryce Mitchell or pass for me, unless I think the guy can totally finish Mitchell. I'm not sure Emmett can do it where he's at. I, so. I have one interesting part. I can't quite see the odds. What's the odds on uh, Josh Emmett plus three and a half? Minus one twenty five. See, I love that as well. As much as I talked about the plus one eighty, that basically just means he can lose a. a 29 28 decision mm -hmm. or if emmett because emmett could finish mitchell he has the power to do so yeah uh, obviously if he wins by finish he obviously cashes the plus three and a half that 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 may be a safer way to play it because i don't see mitchell winning all three rounds against him so interesting interesting all right what was uh do you want to talk to the main event leon edwards Call me we can do to. i'll let you oh. go first on this one um Everybody and their mother seems to be on Colby Covington, and the line is moving on Leon Edwards. To me, there is a gigantic red flag there. Um, I've heard talks about people are very worried about Colby's wear and tear. Um, not not that he's not in good shape, like cardio wise, but the, that his body has been through a lot. And I can poke holes 
in a lot of Colby Covington fights about how they just haven't gone that well. Uh, he beat Jorge Masvidal, who's a bonehead, and who's, they, who they literally said afterwards that we came here to fight. He came here to wrestle. Like, you didn't know Colby Covington was going to wrestle? Give me a break. Uh, before that loses to Usman, before that beats Tyrone Woodley, before that loses to Usman. So now we're all the way back in 2019 before we can find a win that I think is justified. I also think Leon Edwards just fought Kamaru Usman, who is a pretty good get ready for Colby Covington. There's a lot of clinch. There's a lot of wrestling going forward. So the line moving towards Leon Edwards combined with a little bit of worry about <sighs> Colby's just, you know, what physical shape he's in. I don't like these guys that take this much time off. I like that Leon Edwards has been more active. Um, I don't know. I, stylistic wise, it does make sense. Like, well, Colby should chain wrestle and push him up against the fence and do more. And Leon is low volume. Uh, all those things, uh, I can't bring myself to bet on Colby Covington. I lean Leon Edwards in this one. Well, we'll go head to head again because I lie. I really like Colby Covington here. I probably won't bet it for some of the reasons you mentioned that I'll touch on in a second. But. You can, I can easily poke holes in Leon Edwards as well. So he was losing the first fight to to Usman quite emphatically up until that one oh, moment yeah. Usman got complacent. And how did he do it? He was mixing in the wrestling, putting on the pressure. Leon was gassed after the second round. He was on his knees. He was knackered. Colby Covington has one of, if not the best gas tanks. He will keep pushing forward. He'll chain wrestle, as you mentioned. I think he'll get him down quite easily. I don't think Leon Edwards' takedown defense is, is good enough, quite honestly. I think Colby's probably more motivated maybe in this matchup. Um, obviously he hasn't held the bell. Usman's now out of the way. This is really his last opportunity, I think, to make a push, particularly at his age. Leon's obviously won the title. It's harder to stay champ once you're at the top. He's had his moment, the head kick, the retaining in London. I think I, this, I could easily see this being a letdown spot because we also then talk about Usman Edwards too. And Everyone can say, oh, Leon was great. I don't think Usman turned up at all there. I don't know if it was injuries. I don't know what it is. He looked, Usman himself looked exhausted. It looked like he hadn't trained. He, his takedowns were awful. I think if a fully fit Usman turns up and fights Edwards, I think it's not even close, like their first fight up until the finish, obviously. So I, I, I'm gonna, the, one, the main concerns with Colby are his age and the time he's fought in the octagon. But... I, I've seen him in uh, training camps. He's been in camp for quite a long time now. He looks motivated. I think he has all the skills to win this matchup. So I'll, I'll, I'll maybe I'll sprinkle it. But again, for the reasons of his age, I probably stay away. So. All right. All right. The last one I have, uh, I talked to Nathan yesterday and he forbid me to bet it. But I think Martin Budai <laughs> uh, smashes Shamil Gaziev. Gaziev, we watched on Contender Series. He's not that good. He's just a big guy that gets very lesser competition on the ground. He has absolutely no gas take out of the first round. None. Like, he will have to finish in the first round. He's not winning a decision. Budai is much better on the striking. Budai likes to clinch. I see money's come in on Gaziev, and I'm pretty sure it's because you look and you see an undefeated record on Gaziev. I'm telling you, he's not that good. Gaziev fought this complete tomato can on Contender Series, and the fight starts, and Gaziev gets taken down in the first minute, like by this, by this chump. Now he reverses it and gets the Kimura, but uh, Budai, it, the the knock that I've heard on Budai is like, well, he hasn't beaten great competition in the UFC. It's like he's in the UFC. He's <laughs> undefeated in the UFC. This guy isn't. Um, so I think Martin Badai beats Gaziev, but like I said, Nathan, uh, said, no, I'm not allowed to bet a low level, uh, heavyweight fight. So I have a question for you on this one. Actually, do you, mm -hmm. what do you think about the over or under in this fight? So I always see these like big heavyweights and I, I actually always lean over just because it ends up being a sloppy fight. They exhaust each other in round one. And then it's just kind of a, a snooze fest up until the bell. I was actually talking to Jim about this earlier and he mentioned how he could easily see one of either of these guys just ending up in top mount and getting a finish just because the other person physically can't get the other person off of them, which leads to a, 
TKO. What what do you think about the? I think it's close. If Gaziev is going to win, I believe it's going to be in round one. But has got good cardio. Um, I. <laughs> I mean, he beat his fight against Lucas Bresky, where like he probably should have lost that fight, and they both went toe to toe. It was like a really good cardio match, and then afterwards, Bresky gets popped for an illegal substance, comes back and has no cardio, and it was like, oh, that's why he had good cardio in that fight. So, uh, I just think Pudai on the feet. I think he's gonna stuff takedown takedowns from Gaziev, and if he does stuff that first takedown, you can just. You can act, you will actually be able to hear the gas tank of Geziev empty. You'll just hear like a <laughs> <laughs> They have like one of the power bars that they have in video yeah. games and it's yes. just like depleting yeah. like every second. I certainly wouldn't take I w- I certainly wouldn't take this this really juiced like over one and a half, if you're getting the fight to not go the distance or, or something, I can mm-hmm. absolutely see it. Because I think if I think if the later this fight goes, Gaziev is just going to be almost dead to the world, and I could absolutely see Budai just taking him down and getting him, uh, you know, yeah. mount and knocking him out. So, so those are those are some UFC looks uh, that we have. The other one that worries me is everybody and their mother is on Cody Durden, yet money keeps coming in on Olin Beckoff, um, <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, the Cody Garbrandt, Gar- uh, Brian Kelleher. Uh, that's a, a, it's a fun one for the fans, but I'm not sure that's going to be a high level one. So, um, any other fights you want to talk about? Or is that pretty good? You got an opinion on Ferguson and Patty? I don't. Oh. I just um, I don't want to watch it. To be honest, I don't want I don't want to watch Tony Ferguson get punched anymore. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. The only value I can see here is actually Patty by uh, decision. I think it's a uh, plus money or just just about negative it's pretty close but i think i think he's gonna for as little chin as he has uh obviously he's got strong chin but he's very hittable i don't think ferguson has the speed anymore or the diversity to actually put him in trouble paddy is huge compared to him because yeah. paddy shouldn't really be at this weight class he, he he always has a rough cut to try and make this division at which point I then can't see Ferguson even attempting a takedown to get it to the ground. No, he I better think he... not. Paddy will, Paddy will <laughs> I, I, kill him I, on the I, ground. Yeah, I think Paddy's going to have such a strength advantage that he himself could take it to the ground because we have seen Ferguson, su- su- I can't say the word, susceptible to uh, takedowns recently. Or he could just push him up against the cage and clinch. So I would, I would lean paddy i wouldn't lay the juice on paddy direct or parlay it if i was going to play it i think i would play it by decision but that's okay okay all right all right uh all right so that's corbin and i going head to head on some of those but yeah i listen i don't want to watch tony ferguson get punched anymore call me crazy i'm good the man's lost six in a row like it's okay we don't need to we don't need to keep putting him in a cage to get punched in the head um, <laughs> but, it's just but, to try and build the name of his opponents at this point. I know so. it's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. So, so, all right. Bankroll reset day was not a good week. I talked about yesterday that I waffled a couple plays, but when we're looking at it, uh, let's be honest, we lost three plays in the NFL because of injuries and yeah, uh, like losing a play here or there to injuries is, is tough, but lose three in one week. That's, I mean, that that's your difference right there. If one or two of those, you know, hits, um, yeah. I think we're, I, you know, I think we're in perfectly fine shape. So I'm not, I'm not, I, it's just one of those where injuries happen. It's part of sports move on. So NFL went four and five. We did hit the 5% play. So that was yeah. good. College. The football. one thing I will say about NFL quickly, we always talk about how uh, the fact that we changed our units around. So mm-hmm. obviously they're more co- more compressed the fact that we went four and five obviously had the three losses by injury but to only lose 1.9 units considering the run that we had been on before this i think is a great example of the units working well to kind of protect us in this situation so it worked great because this would have been a 20 percent loss this week if we were using the wager talk percentages so this is exactly what i hoped to accomplish with it so i am happy that we uh and we obviously hit the five percent as you mentioned which is always a great great part so yeah nhl went three and four uh if one of those plays turns around we have a nice little profitable week mma i talked about yesterday i really screwed it up with tetsuro tyra that was that put that in the getting 
getting way too cute. I uh, that one's going to bother me for a while. And then soccer, uh, nice job, Corbin, one to zero. And NBA lost a couple of sprinkle plays, but um, we we're, we're, we're I'm changing the way we're doing NBA. Uh, we're, we're we're we will absolutely turn this NBA and NHL round. We're going to lower the unit size. Um, yeah, like kind of like you said, you were really hot in NFL. Like NHL, we started off so hot to begin the year. It was like, eh, you're probably due for a couple of weeks yeah. in a row. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of lower the unit size a little bit just to make sure that we don't go on a big losing streak, um, try and get it back on track. But we did lose minus 6.3 units. And, again, those injuries. Mm, 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 mm. Justin Jefferson, yeah. Wicks, and Tyree Kill. So those uh, those were crushers. And no, the annoying thing is they – uh, two of them almost still got there. Wicks obviously had that catch <laughs> early for 20 yards. So we, we had uh, over 30 yards. So we only really needed 10 more yards. And then Tyreek Hill still should have. I mean, if he played so any close. more of that game, we obviously had his alt line. I think it was, I forgot if we 80. did 70 or 80, but he was so close to getting it. So Yeah, and then Justin Jefferson gets hurt, not on his hamstring. Yes, but but it, but it, but his chest. So yeah, when I was accounting for injuries in that play, <laughs> and I was like debating whether his hamstring is going to be okay, I did not expect his uh him to get sold a hospital pass that then leads to him. Going yeah, to that was playing this week. Wait, like, wait, wait, he just went to the hospital. Uh, <laughs> oh, so yeah. So um, this breaks a streak here of like uh, three weeks in a row of uh, profit. So that's okay. Um, we'll multiply one uh, $14.36 times 6.3, take it away from our total. So we are left with 1,346. So one unit next week is going to equal... $13.46. I'm excited about this next week. I really like where our play's at. I like that darts are getting involved. Um, and I like uh, I like that we identified just what happened um, with last week. So not saying not saying last week should have been huge, but if we avoid the injuries and don't don't make the, the mistakes that I made this last week, I think we're we got a really nice week um, coming up. So uh, Corbin, do you want to give us uh, what we can expect from soccer? from for this week yeah i have a couple of plays that i like mainly for sunday in soccer i'm still trying to tread a bit carefully there's a lot of good matchups this week and some teams are coming off so it was a european break like uh man city didn't play any of their basically first team in midweek so they're refreshed after a couple of days off just gonna try and pick some spots so yeah like you volume. only did one play got the profit and why not you know Let's not mess yeah. with anything. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it for us. Use the promo code GIFT25, gets $25 off a seven day pass. Uh, it includes all plays, all percentages. So, uh, all right, that's going to do it for us. Good luck at all your plays. We'll see you everyone Sunday morning on the road to millions. Good luck. <laughs>